Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want you all to imagine a scenario. I want you to imagine, it's hard I know here, but I want you to imagine being out in the middle of a desert region. And I want you to imagine that one day you end up seeing a man and his family start to build a big, huge boat. Everybody knows, right, the story of Jonah. Everybody, I hope, knows the story of Jonah. Noah. Uh, Noah, I'm sorry. The story of Noah. I'm testing you there. You yeah. The story, I, I read Jonah this morning, and I was still thinking about Jonah, but you, everybody knows the story of Noah? Yes. So I want you to imagine that. I want you to imagine that you are seeing somebody building a big boat. What would be your thoughts? What would be your mind? What would be going through your mind? And I don't want you to think of your mind now. I don't want you to think of if you didn't know who God was, if you didn't know who created you or who created the earth or any of those things. I want you to take, an ima take that count into your imagination. Now, as they were building it, I guarantee that there were some people that were going, this guy's crazy. This guy's building a boat in the middle of a place. This guy's absolutely insane. And there's probably their buddy standing next to them saying, yeah, I think he's crazy, but maybe there's a reason why he's doing it. And then there's others afraid to say those things, just kept quiet. Or in their heart, they were going, there's got to be a reason why they were, he's building this boat. And then when the rain started coming and all the animals started gathering around, Right? God reaches down after all the animals are loaded and closes the door with his own hand. It says it in the scriptures that God closed the door. A lot of the movies you see that they're struggling with the door, but actually it was God who closed the door. Now, can you imagine as it starts to rain, people are like, whoa, it's raining. And then as the water starts rising up, and I know we've seen it here, Right? When it's like last year with Hurricane Irma, when the water started to rise. When the water started to rise, they're like, oh no, it'll just go by. But then when it's up to their ankles, they start to get a little worried. Then when it's up to their knees, they're really worried and now start to beat on the side of the boat. Right? Let us in. I can, I'm sure myself, Noah was probably thinking, come on, Lord. Let me, let me down the door a little bit. Let me let, me let a few of them in. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a few righteous people out there. But because God closed the door, no one could open it. And then soon, the screams and the cries were drowned out by the waters. And all that was left was a single boat with a single family floating in the waters. The whole earth, we believe, was covered by the waters, destroying everything except Noah, his family, and two of each animal, right? I want you to imagine how this happens in modern day. How many of us would be the one to be called? How many of us would God come and say, you have walked a righteous life? You are true. You are just. And I want you to build the boat because I'm going to save you and your family. How many of us could honestly say this? How many of us would be the one getting the wood, sawing it, and building it? How many of us could honestly say that we were righteous in his eyes? And how many of us would be the ones on the outside of the boat pointing the finger saying, this guy is crazy. And how many of us would be left beating on the side of the boat as the waters are rising? I asked this question, and it's been get, mulling through my mind for the last week. How many of us are actually righteous? I know I have a very, very long road to go. I struggle. I falter. I sin. And I wonder what it was that Noah had 
within him that led God to choose him out of everybody to pick him to be saved. Do I have any of Noah's qualities? Do I have any of his family's qualities? And only I can measure myself. Only I can go to the mirror and look. But truthfully, we shouldn't be going to the mirror. We should be measuring ourselves to him that is without sin. And our striving is to get closer and closer and closer to him who is without sin. Jesus Christ, as he hung on the cross, he asked to forgive those people that didn't know what they were doing. And I tell you that it was me myself that was holding the hammer in my hand. I guarantee if we all envision it, we can all picture the hammer in our hand. Who of us has not been without sin? No. There is none that can say it. Who of us has not been able to say that we push down the throne, crown of thorns upon his head? As Noah was building that ark, I guarantee in his mind, he was maybe thinking he was crazy as well. And today, as I look, and I've said it numerous times, as I watch the news and I think about myself in this world, I often think to myself, sometimes, am I crazy for standing by Christ? But then, when I think about all, those water, all that water coming down, I don't want to be the person standing on the outside, beating my hand against the wall of the boat. God willing, he finds me righteous enough that I can step inside the boat. So I can be numbered among those who are saved. God only knows that number. And when Jesus was here, he spent three short years. Today we read a story about Jesus healing the paralytic. And we have the icon here. That man, when he woke up that morning, he didn't realize he was going to be healed. But when he heard that Jesus was coming, and I'm adding a little bit into it, but I guarantee that he heard Jesus was coming. He's like, take me to him. I want to go. And again, in this, somebody had to be carrying him. And he said when he saw their faith. Again, I want, to, want you to call to mind about the, the uh, parable or what the story when Jesus, when they lowered the man in, through the roof. When he saw their faith. Not just the man's. Their faith. He says, your sins are forgiven. Oh, how can you say that? Only God can forgive sins. Now I want you to picture as I'm talking about this gospel reading, who it is going to be inside the boat and outside the boat. And remember to be careful not to become the judge. But I'm sure you can think to yourself, who would be beating against their hands against the boat? How can you say this? How can you do this? Only God can forgive sins. That's blasphemy. And God says, well, so you know that I am from God. I'll show you the true power of God. And he looked down at the man, and I'm sure he had probably untied him because he, he was probably tied with the Lord. And he says, rise up and walk. Again, two miracles were done that day. First of all, he was forgiven his sins. He was healed internally. He was healed within. Even if he wasn't able to walk again, to be saved that he was forgiven, he would have entered heaven running. And then the second miracle was when Jesus told him to stand up and walk. What do you think that man did with the rest of his life? I know that there's been plenty of miracles happen in my life. I could say none so drastic as me being healed from being paralyzed. But really, I've had many new miracles done in my life. The most drastic one is every time I fall to my knees and I'm forgiven for my sins. Every time. 
That's a miracle. My soul is cleansed. My heart is prepared. And when I receive the gift of the Eucharist, again, a miracle. The Spirit comes down, and we believe as Orthodox Christians that it becomes the body and the blood. It becomes the body and blood. Is that not a miracle? Do we not witness miracle every single Sunday, every time we're in service? Well, if you close your eyes during that time, the holiest part of the service, you need to envision that, that the Holy Spirit is coming down and just completely flooding the altar area. And so much so that the flood comes out into here. And the flood goes out into the dining area and outside. Because that grace is just not contained within this building. That grace is enough for the whole world. And imagine that every minute of every day, every hour, that somewhere, somewhere on this planet, somebody is celebrating liturgy. Somewhere. That's the one thing, out of many things, that I thank all those guys that give up their lives and go to the monastery for, because they are constantly in prayer. Somewhere, somewhere, there's a liturgy. Every hour of the day. Truthfully, this building, this is Noah's Ark. And outside is the flood of sin rises. We would hope that people are beating on the door, but the difference is right now that their grace is overflowing, that it can push back that sin and we can open the doors and let those people in. We can let those people in. So they can experience and taste and see the love and the glory and the wonderfulness of God. Who would we be if the rain started to come and we saw the ark being built? As Paul, as St. Paul says, we need to be everything to everybody. We need to be everything to everybody. If somebody's weeping, we should be sitting there weeping with them. If they are weak, we need to be weak with them. And by that weakness, we are made strong. By that weeping, it will bring joy. We are to be everything to everybody. The Holy Spirit can give us that gift. The Holy Spirit can give us that joy. The Holy Spirit can give us that wonderment. Every time we can counter each other, when I call his eminence, or when I talk to Father, or when I talk to everybody, first thing that's usually said is glory to Jesus Christ. That's our Carpatho Russian tradition. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ. That should be the things that are coming out of our mouth. When somebody cuts us off in traffic, glory to Jesus Christ. When somebody angers us, glory to Jesus Christ. If you show that joy, you can lead them into the boat. You can lead them into the place where they need to be, where they can be sheltered from the storms of the world. This is what we are here. This is what we do here. We are sheltered from the storms of the world while we're here. And this is where we need to remember our heart to be. So today, as we prepare ourselves to receive the miracle of the Eucharist, I want you to think to yourself, what do I need to do to be able to be the one being called by God? I want to hear it. Don't you? Well done, good and faithful servant. How many of us want to hear that? All of us. Enter into my rest. How many of us want to hear that? All of us. We should be excited about those things. We are called out. That's what a Christian is. 
We are called out on the world. We are called out to be separated from the world. We are strangers. We are aliens of this world. We are citizens of heaven. And that's where our focus needs to be. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.